Hello, everybody. We're about to go live on Facebook. Book face. This should be fun. Here we go. There I am. I must turn the volume down on that. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am all set. I have my Diet Coke because I cannot get Diet Dr. Pepper right now for some reason. I have my jar here. I have a Sunday, chocolate Sunday from McDonald's, my phone and my computers, and I'm ready to talk. You guys, this is so exciting. We have hit a hundred million page views. You have no idea how astronomical that number is. That is, I, I keep saying a million. It's a hundred million. It's not 10 million. It's not a million. It's not several ton, 10 millions. It is a hundred million, over a hundred million. I thought we had a few days to hit this number, but oh my gosh. So in celebration, let's just talk and let's talk about how awesome it is and how you can get involved. And maybe you can meet some of my team members and maybe you can meet some of my, some of the other people we've had a lot of who've, who've supported us over the years and who's had a lot of, um, We've written the Wikipedia pages, a lot of successes for, just thrilled, just, just thrilled. I, like I said, I thought we had several days. I can't believe I, whether we did this in, in, it only took us about 10 years. <laughs> I don't have a real start date for GSOW. So this is the Wikipedia project that I have been honored to run and well, kind of invent and, um, and we'll talk about the history of it. I wonder if Tim Farley's around anywhere. Can somebody tag Tim Farley and say, hey, Tim Farley, come and talk to Susan about the origins of the GSOW project. Somebody tag him. Here, I'm going to send him a private message too. So see if, see if he, he's around and see, and see if he'll do it. Because he's kind of the start. Ah, he's not on Facebook anymore, hardly at all. Darn him. How could you not? This is just the best thing in the world. I know, I know. Don't, don't get me started. It'd be great if he's if he was here. And it wasn't gra grammar grammatically correct, but you know, I'm just a Wikipedia editor. Okay, so let's see. There is so much to talk about. Let, let, let just this am amazing project and the things that we have done. I'm trying to just make sure I have all my screens right and make sure everything comes up. And so I can see comments. Um, have I got this public? There's so much to talk about. Let, let, let just this am amazing project in the. Okay, I guess we're live now, and they can watch me eating ice cream. Oh my god, ice cream! <laughs> better, I better hide this so I can't see myself, because otherwise I'm just going to want to look at myself yelling at this at the screen. Okay. So the GSOW project is a Wikipedia project that, that was inspired by Tim Farley from whatsaharm.net. 
back in the day, I think it was in 2010, Mark Edward and I had gone on a cruise with the JREF, uh, the James Randi Educational Foundation to the Caribbean. Now, don't get any ideas about me being wealthy or anything like that. I just put it on a credit card <laughs> and I'm probably still paying it off. But anyway, the point is on this cruise, Tim Farley, well, they had arranged like little skeptic camps so people could come up and do presentations. And Tim Farley did a, a talk on um, editing Wikipedia, why it's important, why Wikipedia is a, is a skeptical source, that um, the rules of Wikipedia are completely the um, uh, rules that we all follow by citations, um, notable sources. You have to use reliable sources. You have to use uh, uh, people who are, who are, um, you know, considered experts in their field. Pseudoscience is not allowed to be uh, just uncritically mentioned and so on. And, oh, so Richard Saunders is going to join us. So let me let me just let me just uh, bring him in. This will be fun. So let's find the link. He wants to, he's going to record for the very popular Skeptic Zone. One of my very good friends. Okay, there. Can you guys hear me? I just want to make sure I've got it all set so that you can actually hear me speaking. So put it on the um, the thread for the for the event. There's Richard. I hope you can hear me. Seems to be frozen. I don't know, maybe not. I wonder how come I can't share it. Can you see me? There's Richard Saunders. Oh my gosh, everybody. Hello. Well, I seem uh, to be, thank you. I seem to be in the wrong office. I better change that. <laughs> Let me see now. Uh, These people are so funny. They just there we go. It's hilarious, isn't he? And he's on the opposite side of the world. So he should be upside down, actually. But you know, thank you for waking up. Well, I mean, I should have got uh, I should have got out of bed a little while ago. But hello, Susan Goberg, and congratulations! Yes, it's exciting, isn't it? I'm I'm <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm just absolutely thrilled. So you 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 ask me some questions for your audience, and then I will answer them because I'm so tongue tied today. I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited about all sorts of stuff. Well, Susan, before we begin, before I get into that. What, why are we why are we so happy? What are we celebrating exactly? We're celebrating the 100 million Wikipedia page views. Just That's incredible. Ridiculous. It's incredible. I mean, I can remember doing a lecture a long time ago and I, you know, the, the numbers update once a day. That's all they update is once a day. So, and it, it doesn't update at the same time of the day. And so when I'm doing a talk, I will go and get the latest numbers and I'll write on a piece of paper and then I'll do my talk. And then at the very end of the talk, I'll say, I'll pull out the paper and I'll read it, the number. And I remember one time saying um, the number on the, the slip of paper was over 10 million. And I thought, no, that's wrong. I mean, <laughs> a million, it's, it's, it was a million or whatever it was. And there's a video of it out there somewhere. And then I paused and I said, and I looked at the zeros on the piece of paper I'd written. I said, no, wait a minute. This is 10 million. Is that, wait, 10, one, zero, comma. You know, <laughs> it's just like, I, it even blew me away that I could do it. So, so waking Keep up counting. in the morning, it's a hundred million, over a hundred million. I, we've been thinking this is going to happen. You know, we've been watching the numbers update, but you're, it's random. It, it depends on how many people are viewing a Wikipedia page. So we can't track it exactly. And since it only updates once a day at night. Yeah. I don't know until I wake up in the morning and look at the numbers. And I have been kind of busy the last couple of days. So I didn't look at the numbers. And I thought we had another week. But uh, it looks like there's some Wikipedia pages that just kind of shoved it over the top that people are really interested in. 
So uh, Havana syndrome. Havana syndrome. Is, Havana this is, syndrome this, is gone. This is the crazy um, nuts. Yeah. Energy, Rob, energy Rob weapon thing. Yeah, Rob Palmer wrote that Wikipedia page or rewrote the Wikipedia page a few years ago, I think. And we've been doing, he's been doing the darndest, him and other people, to keep it updated because it's just really a, a battle. And yeah. so um, to keep the, the pseudoscience off of it. And I think that is that page, you know, there's, there's, there's um, trends and sometimes it'll be this page has just gone nuts. And then sometimes it's another page that's gone nuts. We can see this on, on this tool we call Stat Badger. And this, this tool that was created, the software is created, was created by uh, Kyle po Polish from um, Polish, yeah. Polish from Data Skeptic. And, that is skeptic. Yeah, Mark Edward names everything, so he named it. Uh, he named it um, Stat Badger, I think, is what he did. And so we can see our numbers of the pages that we have written, and we're over. I need to look how many we have. We're under two thousand pages mm -hmm. that we've written. I hope you're recording this because you know this. I certainly am. Don't worry. <laughs> I know you are. I know Richard Saunders <laughs> lives with a microphone on him. And there's no way that he could possibly not. Several, as, as a matter of fact, several <laughs> microphones are yes, around and, and about me at the moment. If I open uh, a drawer, I've got a, a, a portable, oh, you can't see that properly, but that's a portable wireless microphone. And I, I open another pouch here. They jump out. He does Christmas stockings with, with microphones in them. Here we are. And that's uh, another one you can see there on your screen. That's a, a road reporter microphone. There's, I'm there's speaking into a road, um, a road NT. When I, I sound like I'm a walking um, billboard for Rode microphones, but they happen to be very good. I just listened to the uh, interview you did with um, with Dr. Carl. He's just a joy. Now, the Isn't beginning he? was a little, oh, we're talking about Odd. ring lights. That was a little, like, boring. But I went and pulled out my <laughs> ring light, and I did that just for you because I said, I'm going to record something today and on and do this Facebook Live. So I know darn well, well, I better have a ring light. And I pulled it out and you gave it to me. I did, You yes. mailed it to me. And I, I listened to you and Car Dr. Carl and talking about ring lights. And yes, it does make a big difference. It, is it does make a big difference. Let's go right back to the beginning, Susan Gerbeck, from Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. Why did you start or how did you get involved right from the beginning with this uh, adventure into Wikipedia? Well, you know, the thing about it is, is that it wasn't supposed to be a thing. Um, Tim Farley um, from mm -hmm. what's the, uh, what's what's, the what's, what's the harm.net he had uh, just done a little you know workshop on why it's important to edit Wikipedia why should the skeptic community be editing Wikipedia because the rules are the rules of skepticism because it's a huge important site because it influences people it influences the media on and on and he had some tips on how to do some stuff and I took notes this was on a James Randi Educational Foundation cruise to the Caribbean in 2010 and I All right. didn't know what the heck I was doing no clue. So I just kind of took some notes and a few months later, I said, I will go ahead. I will go ahead and try. And the rules of Wikipedia are really difficult for at least for me to understand. They're really text heavy. And it's, there's, it's not intuitive. They give you like, they'll give you a spreadsheet. It looks like a, not a spreadsheet, but a, a document. It looks like it's written for a, for tech, you know, for a person who codes. And they put like every example possible that might ever possibly come up, even things that have been in the past that they're no longer doing anymore. It's all there. Yeah. I said, yeah. this is so intimidating. But what happened? It was all Brian Dunning's fault. I'll blame him. So <laughs> on the Brian, so when I was on this cruise, Brian Dunning was also on the cruise. And I took a photograph of Brian Dunning. He was getting ready for his, um, his talk he was going to do and I'm going to grab this picture right now and he was taking he was he was you know thinking about what he was going to do and I took a photograph of him because I'm a professional portrait photographer at least I used yes to that's right I remember baby back right? in the day back in the day and so um he uh I took the picture and then months later I said you know I would I'd like to put this picture I took of Brian Denning up on his Wikipedia page. And I looked at his Wikipedia page and it was just crap. I mean, really, mm -hmm. it was like four citations or something. It was just really awful. So I tried 
I put the photograph on there thinking that, you know, I put the photograph and it looked really good. And then I thought, well, you know, the whole page looks awful. So wait, wait a I, minute, you put a photograph up of Brian Dunning and it looked really good. There must be something wrong. There. <laughs> it looked fantastic. But the problem was, <laughs> is that I, the rest of the Wikipedia page looked awful. So I just went through and learned how to do it. Oh, where is that picture? There it is. Okay. Let me, let me show everybody this photograph of Brian Dunning on um, a cruise, the JRF cruise. So I took Good the photograph. Good grief. Yeah, I put Good that picture. Good grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So folks, for listening, we're looking at a picture of Brian Dunning sort of in the corner of the ship there on the deck and um, looking down at an old-fashioned laptop. Yeah, look at that laptop. An old computer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he look, there's a phone looks- on the wall. There is a phone yeah. on the wall. There's a phone on the wall. He almost looks earnest and, and like he's pretending to be, you know, serious and do some work. Look at that. Mm-hmm. We, 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 lo- we like to raz Brian every now and then, yeah. every now and then, it, it, any chance we get. It was wonderful. So he, um, so I put that Wikipedia, I mean, that picture up on his Wikipedia page and then proceeded to try, try to rewrite this Wikipedia page and nearly got banned. It was awful. Just horrible. People were not nice to me. They, they you know, I'd ask questions and, you know, how many times you can ask Tim Farley, you know, I'm, I'm a beginner. I'm a photographer. I am. I do. I'm history is my thing. Mm-hmm. social history i don't know anything about coding so i kept asking tim and he politely answered me but you could tell he wasn't excited about it you know he's like come <laughs> on already because he that's what he does he does computers you know that's his thing yeah so anyway the thing is is that it wasn't going to be a thing um facebook started what year did we start facebook what was that year oh it was six seven something like that i can't remember 2006, 2007. Well, I wasn't really so, so, on. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere it was later. You should know. We did the prediction project. Uh, I should know because I don't think anyone predicted uh, Facebook and no. Instagram and um, Twitter and uh, all those sort of things. Strangely, right. we're not predicted. Well, we went through those numbers so often that it's kind of confusing which year it was. But I think I do remember in the prediction project we came across um, when Facebook started. Anyway. We probably did. Yes, we, prob- we, we probably mentioned it because, folks, there's in the prediction project, there's a whole section of things they didn't predict, which turns out, Susan, I always, you know, I got it wrong. I thought it was 200 events that they didn't predict, one for every year, 2000, 2001, 2002, so on. But I'm doing it yesterday, working on the database. I discovered, of course, it's 2010 predictions because every year in the prediction project, we're covering 2000 all the way to 2020. That's 21 years. Yeah, that's as right. It turns out. Absolutely. Which is the same age as Wikipedia or almost. We're at 20 years for Wikipedia, right? It started in 2001. Okay. Okay. January. So this year, next January, I guess that'll be 21 years. So yeah. It, we're all connected. Anyway, the point is, is that Facebook yes. started and I posted on Facebook and I had like, you know, 10 friends or something like that. And I said, um, I had edited Wikipedia and I'd made these changes and stuff. And, and I think of Lee Pinter and Dustin Phillips, who I didn't know very well, we were Facebook friends. They just said, well, what are you doing? What's that all about? And so I said, well, I'm going to do this. And so they said, well, show me how to do that. So we went back and forth. It turned out to be like a group of five people for through email. And then right. Facebook kind of just grew and grew. And then somebody said, hey, do you, uh, Mark Edward said, let's go. We're going to go to Colorado and do a skeptic camp. That's what it was. And I went and I said, I'll do a, I want to do a skeptic camp talk too. Mm. And, uh, so I did. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I, I hopefully it doesn't the video doesn't exist and then i did for the berry skeptics which is happening this weekend you guys skeptic yes yes i'll be there yep yeah and so (laughs) it's exciting so i had uh just tried to um come up with a name and as i said mark edward names pretty much everything and he says let's call it gorilla skepticism on wikipedia because we. so he's the one responsible for that name Uh yeah well gorilla skepticism was what we had been doing mark edward and i and 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 others trying to do things with psychics and 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 that was just a term he used which was kind of more of a activism but growing from the the beginning you know from your own small group into a bigger group and yeah he uh so 
it wasn't going to be a thing, Richard. It wasn't. It was just me and a few people. So what, what were some of the early pages you were working on apart from Brian Dunning? Well, the, one of the first pages, and see, I have all this because Kyle from Data Skeptic has done this. I can do this. I can look. I can look all this up. So the first page that we had ever considered one of our Wikipedia pages that we ever wrote was I rewrote Brian Dunning's. And yeah. then we went to Phil Plate. We rewrote Ryan the Bad Astronomer. Yeah, and these are yeah, uh, yeah. these are in English. Then Derek Colanduno from Skepticality. Yes. James Alcott from mm -hmm. uh, the, the CFI. Ray Hyman, Robert yep. Schaefer, Barry Byerstein. Yes. I look back on some of these pages that I wrote at the beginning, and I almost want to cry. They're so awful. <laughs> 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 I need a new rewrite. Barry Byerstein, Jerry Andrus. Yes. That was one of our favorites. Mark Edward, Ben Radford, Committee for Skeptical Inquirer, James Randy Educational Foundation, and so on. We wow. started back, the first page I have on here was from April of 2010. Okay. So okay. the idea originally was to spruce up and to improve and to get in the shape uh, right. existing pages of, of noted skeptics and skeptical right. organizations. We, when when this... this uh, was it a movement? Was it a trend? Was it an idea? Was it a, a switch in your thinking to uh, go into other pages to improve the science reporting on those pages, to point out the pseudoscience when it was reported, uh, when it was mentioned on the pages and things like that? Oh, we were doing that right at the beginning. The, oh, okay. the pages I've just read to you that we wrote are pages we wrote or rewrote, yeah. I mean, complete, yeah. complete rewrites. But we we had always been editing, you know, different things. I, I remember putting um, uh, the James Randi Educational Foundation used to do a, a Pegasus Award every April first. Yes. And when they put out an article saying we've done a Pegasus and we're we're going, these are the people who we're Pegasing. Yes. <laughs> I this, this is like the, the Australian <laughs> skeptics have a similar thing. It's called the Ben Spoon Award, where we award. Uh, some outrageous claim or some person making pseudoscientific claims or a, a psychic or something who fails miserably or something. Like mm -hmm. that. So we would, I would go to the Wikipedia page and put on the Wikipedia page and use a citation from the JREP saying they have just won a Pegasus award yeah. for these reasons. And that was amazing, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't have got made it to my stat badger because that's just like, four sentences or something like that onto a page. And the only thing that we count, that hundred million, hundred million, oh my God, <laughs> the hundred million page views, that's only the pages we have written completely or completely rewritten, just, you know. Uh, I see. So no I no see. little little edits. That if we did, we couldn't even track that. And we would be in the- Of course. We would be, we would have hit a hundred million page views in- Oh gosh! Now, like after a couple of year, couple of years. Now, what, what, one of the pages that, that sticks in my mind, one of the ones you wor worked on, or no, you must have worked on it. Would have been created already. Was cupping. Now you had a good success with cupping, didn't you? Because right. it was a, a fad. That. Fad. Yeah, but, but uh, now what? The we last rewrote Olympics? the lead. We rewrote the lead because it was in the it was in the Olympics. It was being mentioned because of Michael Phelps. Now, cupping, folks, I'm sure you, you, you may have heard of this, is where the practice of getting large glass semi-spheres uh, and heating them slightly, putting them on the back, usually the back of somebody, and the, the sphere cools down and that creates a bit of suction and it draws up the skin and you leave it on there and you take it off and it leaves big red marks on the back. Giant hickeys, circular giant hickeys, hickeys, you guys. And the idea is through no science that it should help you flow your energy cheese or release blockages or the toxins come out and all the you know all the words they throw around yeah and so we it was in the media because of michael phelps in the olympics 2014 2016 i, I can't remember it was a summer summer olympics. 16 16 it would have been yeah Right. So we we got that lead changed and yeah. then we changed the lead in other languages too. We didn't know cupping was going to be a thing until it was a thing. And you did that, but because because no because Phelps 
mm-hmm. or whoever it was at the time and whatever Olympics it was, it was getting a lot of attention. And you oh, noticed yeah. a lot or of the suckers going straight to that page to have a look. Well, what's this? All this cupping. And that's why you partly why you targeted that page. So when people went there, they at least could get some reputable referenced scientific information on cupping. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad you remember this. This is a really good example of, of, yeah. of influencing the media and uh, trying to get our word out there because we were a little slow because we hadn't written that page and we weren't really thinking about it. But it had um, it received about a thousand page views a day. That was normal right. traffic for it. And the day that that uh, that Michael Phelps kind of was all over the media and people are going, what are those circular hickey looking things on him? And the, the media, and I have slides of all these different uh, headlines at, of uh, the media was interested in what was going on. And they showed these pictures of him swimming with these hickeys. And uh, they were having like uh, cupping practitioners, practitioners come on TV shows and saying, oh, yes. what is that? And they were showing them. So the day that it hit its height, which was the day that we were working on the lead of that Wikipedia article, we uh, the Wikipedia page in one day hit 160,000 views. Wow. From wow. 1,000 yeah. to 160,000 in one day. That was Yeah, their- well, it was it was big news. I mean, because oh, yeah. these famous sports stars were standing up and walking around the pool and some and everybody could see clear and they still do it. I mean, in the last yeah, the the Olympics just gone. I, I'm sure I noticed some athletes celebrity or whatever and you know what they tweet it because you'll see um well i don't follow it but from what i understand you can watch the stats of a wikipedia page and they usually correspond with whenever like the kardashians or something has posted something a tweet about how they've gotten their cupping yeah. or whatever. and you'll see oh, wow. the spike on the cupping go up so people yeah. are hugely influenced by celebrity uh and sports figures and they want to be like them and they think that they're not only cool, but you know they want to follow their lifestyles. So now you've had uh, you've had some interesting times with doing the work, the, the cabal, the team you have, and we'll get to how you folks, you at home, can be part of this movement, this revolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've had some interesting interactions with so-called psychics who you've written about uh, <laughs> over the years, because that's what you do. You go onto their page and you put referenced factual information about. Uh, these so-called psychics and sometimes it's the last thing they want to have on their page oh we've heard it from a lot of people that the, they will say oh whatever you do don't go to my wikipedia page it's all lies right. uh, we've heard this from anti-vaxxers we've heard it from the brzezinski clinic the cancer clinic when we rewrote mm. that wikipedia page we it was on their f it was on their faq on their website is it said do not go to our wikipedia page <laughs> um <laughs> And different psychics have said as well, they'll tell their fans, um, don't go there. Or if the fan says, what is this information I read about you on your Wikipedia page? They'll say, anybody can write anything on Wikipedia, so just ignore yes. that. And yeah, we hear that down, so often. It, yeah. I'm sure it bothers them way more than we think. Um, I remember Jeanette Wilson had a cow. That was the one from... Um, the UK. Jeanette Wilson's from the UK, yes. From the UK, she, but I mean, she lives in New Zealand now. We okay, no, she's her. one of the, the gaggle of, of psychics who build themselves as blah, 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 leading psychic or yeah. this, you know, most uh, celebrity psychic to the stars. And, you know, they, they come and go. She's also anti-COVID. I mean, anti-vaccine. Is, of course. Right, of course. Pro you post. did a... I did a whole yeah. expose on it with the New Zealand skeptics. They were well, so... Why don't, we, why don't we use this as a great segue? So not only do you go on and... Um, you add the, the correct references and citations to their Wikipedia page, but you you also do stings, your yeah. famous stings, all named after food. <laughs> Again, Operation, Mark, Mark has named them. <laughs> Operation, you know, everything from pizza to hot chocolate to whatever you call them. And this is where you will be part of the audience of a virtual meeting of a psychic or you go in person and you do undercover work. Yeah, absolutely. And I try to, uh, and and I succeed a lot of the time to get people within our community to help. Um, yeah. they, it's not just me, because um, I might come up with a plan and I, I might uh, instigate it and pay for it with funds from our nonprofit. Please donate people. I put the link in the chat. We need money to uh, help us keep doing these. Well, you things. can mention that link when we when we uh, wind up. We'll do that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's also on my Facebook feed. I just put it there, you guys. So anyway, right. the point is 
that yes. yes we went in and i recorded jeanette wilson in a, one of her workshops and she, yeah. wasn't, she didn't expect to be recorded because she always says oh i'm pro vaccine i'm pro mammograms i have no problem with 5g she says these things in public but in private she's telling her people in the workshops completely opposite so i recorded her and uh, i got a, i got at least 16 minute rant of her talking about vaccines and how she's yeah. anti-vaccine and so i gave the the video i had uh, recorded to a reporter from new zealand from spinoff is that what it's called spin spin i don't know i don't know, Remember I don't the know that one. it's a main it's a main paper anyway so he, okay he interviewed me and he listened to the uh, recording and then he talked to jeanette wilson and and interviewed her and she said oh i'm pro vaccine what are you talking about and he said i just listened to the video and she's yeah. like what video because people will tell us that she'll do a workshop, record it, and then her husband will hit pause when she gets to the anti-vaccine stuff and then wow. turn it back up again. Yeah, it's really interesting. The spin-off, the spin-off. Okay, the spin-off, okay. Yep. Yeah, so she is trying to keep that out, but the reporter said, oh, I just listened to this video and I didn't make the video public. I just gave it to reporters. And so she was furious and she had a fit yeah. because she when she found out she had a wikipedia page we can create a wikipedia page when they get enough media coverage yes well, it, media no, coverage it's, because it's, we gave them the stuff to give her publicity oh, I see. Well, negative publicity <laughs> that, but, that's the thing some people say oh why haven't i got a wikipedia page well there's there's a certain criteria you have to meet and that's not strict. in your hands that's, Especially that's simply living. yeah and uh if i could speak personally for for a moment i mean the last thing i ever set out to do or expected or even knew about or anything like that when i started my skeptical adventures was i would end up getting a, a, a wikipedia page which was a surprise to me when you let me know it was there and another surprise to me when i woke up this morning breaking <laughs> sort of, you know sleepy eyes or oh, i better look at the news what's happening and there's a message from you saying oh look here's richard saunders wikipedia page in the czech language Mm -hmm. how about that because i've got a very big spot in my heart for the czech republic uh, uh four five six seven years ago i was at olomots for their international science festival where i was very oh, um, very pleased and honored to be a judge to judge the scientific films there my goodness me what a wonderful time i had uh and uh well there you go so that was a big surprise for me this morning oh i'm looking at the page now it's better than the yeah. english version Pavel, one of my GSOW editors, he doesn't, they don't tell me what they're working on, but this morning I woke up and, he, and it was done and I was like, oh, well, that's fantastic. All right, let's, let's <laughs> let me let Richard know. But you yeah. unfortunately were not part of the hundred million page views because it takes oh. a day for the pages that we create to load into Stat Badger. Well, and it was well, because well, I, mean, I was adding you to the page that I noticed that we had a hundred million. <laughs> well, you're in the next it. hundred million, Richard. Well, I know, I know. I'll, I'll claim being in the previous hundred million because some people would have looked at my original page. And that well, yes, your original yeah. page has been viewed, and not only there in you English. Go. You have a Wikipedia page in Afrikaans. Yes, that's right. Yes, <laughs> for all our South African listeners, you can check out my Afrikaans page. You yes. Sure do. You have you have a Wikipedia page in Afrikaans and in Czech and in well, English. Well, my plea is for um, for you to keep going, not necessarily mine, of course, but more important people. Please don't stop. This is such fascinating work you do. Now, as I said before, why don't you tell our listeners how they can get involved? Where should they go on the internet to find out more? Well, they should come to Facebook and just message me if they are, you know, really have some serious questions. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, our secret cabal is located on Facebook. So I'm very wary of making sure everybody understands that before they get all excited and say, I will never, ever use Facebook ever in my life, because that's where we are. We're located. Maybe someday we'll yeah. move, but it, it, it makes it easy for us to be able to communicate and share. And we are kind of a social group. You know, we can see each other's posts and talk yeah. about each other's dog or whatever vacation they're taking. So we like that social aspect. But at the moment, Facebook is the perfect place for us to go through, but if they really want to just have some information, we do have a Facebook page where it has a lot of information on it. We have a website that's called gsowteam.org mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you can get information there. You can also go 
and um, just watch. Uh, we have an, a, a Facebook page called About Time, which is the name yes. of our nonprofit. It's About Time Project. You can find it on Facebook. And um, there you can watch the thread of every time we post a new Wikipedia page, we talk about it. Every time we do a new sting, we talk about it. Every time there's some kind of new thing that's happening in the activism world that we're in, we, we talk about it. Conferences we go to, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be doing some, I, I understand we're going to be going to conferences in 2022. Ooh. So we're hoping to have some scholarships for the people who attend, um, who are part well. of the team. So I, I'm, 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 I'm angling, I'm talking to people in Canada and I'm angling for maybe a North American trip early in the new year where I hope to, uh, if you're listening, Adrian Hill, maybe get up to Calgary or something like that and have some. I meetings. would love to go to Calgary yeah. too. Yeah. Mm, There's so many fun? places I'm dying to visit. There was a lot of things I had to put off and you guys, yes. I really want to come out to your group and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one and, and I know Richard will do the same thing. We, yeah. we, we, we really can want do. to meet more people. And it helps grow. It really helps grow the community whenever we're... Yeah. You know, well, has Susan Gobeck and Richard Saunders visit Calgary to eat maple syrup with Adrian Hill tour. We could call it that. <laughs> that would, well, we could call it the About Time Tour, which is makes a little more sense. But we could, we could have maple syrup if you want. We could have maple syrup. Susan Gobeck from Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. Thank you very much for this impromptu suddenly get out of bed, Richard, and, and interview Susan. And, and go into my house. You're in, you're in my uh, Zoom. I'm, I'm His Zoom room, you guys, is my background of my room. So it looks like he's at my house. <laughs> but every, every week when we play trivia or we're doing the prediction project, I always end up in, in, in your house for some strange reason. It, it is really but weird we'll... when you look out the window of your real house, <laughs> wherever you really are, and it's... it looks like you're looking out my window. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's kind. It's kind of weird. It's it's all weird. Oh, Susan, it's so weird. I look forward to. I look forward to seeing you in person next year. That'll be just fantastic. But for now, folks, visit those websites. There'll be a link in this week's show notes. Susan Gerbeck, thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Now, don't go away, Susan Gerbeck. You're back. It's the end of the show. Of course, the music's over, and you know what that means? It means a dice game. We're going to roll three fives in a row. Here we go. This is the week. This is the week. Five, five, five. And don't use that dice. Don't use that die that Adrian sent you that has the fake die on it. You can't see Apparently, that, but there's a dice well. Right. Turn off your virtual reality thing. I got I got oh yeah, okay. I'll, I'll do that. I'll turn hey, off people my people who are watching this on Facebook. Virtual background. Um let's see. Choose video virtual background. I'll turn that off. None. There we go. That's the background of my little home studio there. Oh, look at that. There's a uh CSI fellowship. CSI. I have one. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so this is this is the dice machine uh, that my Greg Dray gave, uh, Greg Dray gave me. Yep, there it is, folks, if you ever wondered. So here we go. So, Susan, what? <laughs> Why do I bother with this? <laughs> what, what number? Are we using what okay. kind of dice diary are we using? It's a, I can't even hold that up to the it's camera. One Never D6. mind. One, one you just have to, yeah, it's a, it's a D6. Okay. It's a D6. Here we go. So get you at home, use your psychic power. Guess you are out there live. We're doing this live. This is a change. Here it comes. The first number is. Ooh, close, Susan, close. Four. 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 I swear it's rigged. Okay, next number. Here it comes. Here it comes. I and can't see this. I can see it. Ah, uh, you know what, Susan? It's a five. It's a five. And I don't cheat. I just, I honestly just pick it up as, as it falls because like, you know like that because batters. five doesn't come but up that much. it's going to be another five. Here we go. This will be the time we're going to do fives in a five. row. Last number. Here it comes. Well, we've sort of been dancing around. So that's a three. So today's winning numbers, folks, are four, five, and three. Thank you, Susan. It's going to be five, five, five someday. One, oh, will I do one more? No, because it wouldn't matter. Just do it for the rest of our lives, and there will be. I'm going to do five, one five, more. Five, five, okay, okay, if you want, but it's one more. okay. Well, I wish I could help you, but it's another three, a three. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have done one more. Sorry. We could just keep doing it, and then eventually it will hit five, 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 and we'll act all excited, and then we'll just cut the video to that part. I know how magic works. You <laughs> showed the video of us doing the five, five, five. It might have taken us fifteen no. hours. Oh. No. You oh, five. There we are. I had to do it three more times to get a five for you, but that doesn't count. 
But and thank you so much, Richard. You have been amazing. You and the Skeptic Zone have done so much for our our Wikipedia project. And I'm going to just tell you really quick. Let me look really quick. Yeah. Oh, I know this yeah. is the main part of the show. But we have all the, one of our largest groups of editors is in Australia. Believe yes, it so I understand. Lots I of us don't. It doesn't Australia surprise me at all. Yeah. Australians mm -hmm. are just these people who are doers. And some of our more prolific editors came from listening to the Skeptic Zone, even though they're not on um the skeptic zone my uh rob palmer found yeah. sow from here yes i interviewed him very early on i think at a, yeah. at a, at a, at a, uh, in las vegas i think years ago. we have created 66 now this isn't counting your page because yours hasn't loaded yet but we've created 66 wikipedia pages all focused on australia we've had uh several of our editors who will focus on things that are like you have a big award there in australia it's called the uh, not sure. not Australian of the Year. I'm talking in science. It's a oh the Eurekas. No, it's something else. It's no. called some some people get they get these big honors. They get these big awards. It's a anyway. So, anyway, okay. Anyway, one of my uh, one of my editors, Julie, she bear she will go and she'll see who the winners are each year, and if they're in science, she'll look at their Wikipedia page. Oh, Order of Australia, it. I think. That Order is. of the Australia. Order of... That's it. Yes, yes. And she'll go through and she'll pick out the people who haven't had Wikipedia pages or um, need them updated and she'll go through and do them so we've done several also friends in science and medicine yes and those all of them greg nielsen dr carl i'm looking at his dr page. carl we re rewrote it and i'm looking right now as of last night it's already had two hundred thousand page views fantastic two hundred thousand eight hundred and forty four <laughs> so this is it make it makes it that's just right, fantastic you know? just looking at it, there's over 900,000 Wikipedia pages views that we have tagged Australia. Fantastic. Well, more we Australians. Are, come on, you guys. Yeah, come on, you guys. Come on, you guys. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop right, my right. recording here. But if you want to keep chatting, Susan, okay, you can yeah, do yeah. that because I've done, I've got enough content for the show, folks. If you're going to listen to the Skeptic Zone podcast, well, you've got a sneak peek of what's coming up with Susan. You can, you know, what it's like, you know. Excuse me, you know what the process is like? I'm here uh, channeling through this. We're channeling. I keep, I keep, yeah, I'm channeling. I keep advertising road microphones, but I, they're, they're very good. Um, and I, I, you know, calls. you went through my system and through the computer and you're recording onto a separate device, all that sort of uh, technical stuff, but it works. But now we are still broadcasting live to Facebook, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody on Facebook. Can you can you see interact? Because I've only got the Zoom screen up. I've turned off everything else. Can you see interactions or anything like that? Yeah, I can see posts. We're yeah. late about uh, thirty seconds. Right. I hope people are saying positive things. I, I might have. Well, a there's. Well, or... Rob Palmer said that he he wanted a one and then he wanted a six, so he <laughs> totally flew it. I mean, it wasn't even close. I at least got a five. <laughs> I think that I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I can't really tell if people are watching or how many people are watching. Um, I can't I can't tell, but that's okay. I'm going to chop this up and probably use it as videos. And I'm just so pleased. I want to talk about everything and how exciting. Tell me, tell me something. Tell me something good, Richard. Let's talk about the <laughs> Australian Prediction Project because that is so awesome. I'm waiting for that article. You were talking to Tim Mindham about it. Yeah. Okay. So for people watching or watching in replay or whatever this isn't being recorded for the podcast but that's okay so my 12-year adventure with which i've had this journey with many other people of course of the great australian psychic prediction project is nearing its conclusion susan i have to tell you that during the week i finished all the predictions we had five to go last week but fear not because my team just wanted to keep going it's a great it's a great thing we do every week we still have oh, around about 60 events we have to find for the database you know big events that psychics didn't see coming every year that's an interesting i've written mm -hmm. yeah i've written the first draft which i have now uh, submitted to tim mendham mm -hmm. who people listen to the skeptics and know tim mendham who is the editor a really of the nice skeptic. guy you guys mm. very nice and guy. he's going to go now through the it's about I think I've written about between eight and 9,000 words for the report. Uh, and he's going to go through the first draft and we're going to whip it into shape. So it'll be, you know, um, 
for errors and maybe you're suggesting this and put this here and that, you know, that sort of thing. But the report itself goes into the history of why people believe in predictions and society and talks about Nostradamus. And then it goes into various theories of how time flows. So why, how can people see the future that hasn't happened yet? The information from that event must be traveling backwards in time to reach the brains of the people involved. And even when you think about it, it's, it's quite interesting and complex. Yeah. And how no matter what logical, scientific, rational arguments we put up against psychics, all they have to say is, oh, it doesn't work like that. It's, it's supernatural. Like that. And that's it. That's the in, get out of jail free card instantly. Are you or you can't prove it's not psychic. That's the killer. That's the that's the one. And as as if that then that's a fait accompli for their argument. That's it. Oh, you can't prove it's not psychic. Therefore, it is. And I talk about that in, in the, the report saying, no, the burden of proof lies with you. If you say it's psychic or you say you can see the future, then you must back that up with uh, in, uh, data. And I'm not going to give the final results away because we're, we're close to publishing. But very exciting. Uh, it, it, you don't have to be a psychic to predict that the uh, that the uh, for a skeptic the, it might help. You. The, the success rate is not as fabulous as the psychics might want you to uh, want you to believe. Right. So that's 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 huge. I mean, you know, it, when that's put to bed, more or less, that'll be quite something because you know, it's, well, the show's been going. This show's been going for in its thirteenth year now, I think. So this project has been going slightly less than the length of the Skeptic Zone has been I'm on the air or whatever. So that's in that's that's something. Hello, Mark Edward. Hi, Richard. How are you? I'm doing really well. We're also I'm, live on Facebook. Aren't you so proud of her and her? Ten hundred <laughs> ten million. See, he said ten million. Ten, it's yeah, hard to ten, ten, ten thousand views, Susan. I couldn't be happier. Ten thousand views. When happened. I had ten thousand views, I was thrilled. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> now it's what a hundred million or over a hundred million. Yeah. So if she had a nickel for each one of those, <laughs> oh, I know. I would have a yeah. huge tax bill. Is what I would have. And people would be wondering, how did you get a nickel for every view that you got on Wikipedia? I would be sitting the there clicking over and over, view, and view, buy a new view, shirt. view. <laughs> and even the cat gets a, a mention, look at that, behind yeah. you, behind behind you. There's Adrian, Adrian, a Ariadne, I'm sorry, I called her Adrian. <laughs> you, I'm sorry I naming... called Adrian, she's a really wonderful person, Ariadne. She is. Okay, yeah. but it, it's, it's Ariadne. I think you should name your next cat the skeptical godmother fairy angel from the internet. That would, be I would cool. never be able to remember that at all. <laughs> never be able to. Never. I'm trying to write a song about the, the skeptical fairy, but it's very hard to get the rhymes in. Very hard. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. <laughs> so uh, that, anything else I should know? I hear they're having a conference over there. Absolutely. The Australian and New Zealand um, skeptics are uh, coming together this year for the very first time to have a joint annual convention. This will be on the 20th to the 21st of November. And that is all the information is well, at uh, Skept, yeah, it's virtual. Uh, because, of, because of COVID, it was a safer thing to do. Um, the numbers are looking pretty good here, but we, you know, you, we just can't be sure. So just safety first, which means uh, that everybody around the world can join us at skepticon.org org.au find out all the information tickets are only 40 australian dollars which is barely over 40 new zealand dollars which is under 30 us the whole weekend the whole you weekend. can see all the whole weekend for under 30 us dollars so i encourage everybody to go there check it out and book book a ticket i mean it, it's it's so cheap and you get uh, to hear people like uh, uh professor richard wiseman Yay. who's you know worth the price of uh, admission alone dr susie wiles uh from new zealand who is new zealand of the year and lots of other uh international speakers so i'm really looking forward to that that should be uh, a lot of fun yeah so skepticon 2021 australia and new zealand you know i i just have to mention this that susie is a wikipedia page that we rewrote Mm -hmm. uh, that is a page of ours. So is Richard Weissman. And we've written Richard Weissman <laughs> in, in multiple, multiple languages. And yeah. let's, let's, just, let's just, just look at these numbers because what ends up happening is these people, they get in the news, they yeah. get, are getting some publicity. We can write the page or we can, you know, rewrite it because it's just, it's a lot of work. 
to, um, I mean, it needs to be updated and it needs to be good. So let's look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Wills, W-I-L-E. Is that how you spell it? Yeah, Susie Wills. She is, uh, she was getting like no views. I mean, just like nothing, even though she was Australia, she was really important and prominent in Australia. I mean, not in Australia, New Zealand. In New Zealand, yes. She really wasn't getting a lot of page views because, mm -hmm. you know, just she wasn't known a lot out of New Zealand. But let's see, I can do these amazing things. Let me show people this. So this is her Wikipedia page. We rewrote this Wikipedia page. Um, one of my editors, mm. Triman Cassidy, and he yeah. wrote this Wikipedia page in Valentine's Day, 2020. So we're at a year-ish. Mm -hmm. And she got some spike up into the 1800 page views for one day. And then it went back down to four or 500 page views, 200 page views a day. And then look at this, 2000 page views in one day. That was in April of 2021. So mm -hmm. that was right whenever COVID started becoming more prominent because that's yes, what's yes. happening is people were like, what's, wait, this COVID thing, it's real or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And she started doing media and you can tell that on this day she did media because people turned around and said, who is this person, you know, and then it went back down into the, you know, under 200 views a day. And then it started peaking up here again around, what would that be? September. And then here again, here, she's got a page view day where she hit 1800 page views in one well, day. Well, she's been, uh, of course, prominent in, um, in forthright in, promoting common sense, good science and things like that, yeah, she's amazing. which naturally makes her a target for the anti-vaccination loons out there right. and the oil hat brigade and the angry people and the there freedom. She is. And there she is. There she is. Ebola uh, they criticize, they criticize anything about her, uh, but they can't, they can't really offer valid criticisms against her arguments because they don't have those valid criticisms. So they'll, they'll attack her personally, which is just a horrible thing to do. Um, yeah, they do. And it's, yeah. She's just such a wonderful person too. I, yeah, yeah. I, I just, you know, her hair. I think, I think she was about a, her hair. She's so that hair. <laughs> I just want to touch it. It looks so. Now good. remind me. <laughs> I think she was at the in Christchurch when you and I spoke in Christchurch. No. No. Nope. I, I'm, I'm misremembering. She's, I'm no, misremembering. she was on the phone at one point with him because she received an oh. award for the New Zealand Skeptics, but we were right. We they did not have her there. She was having okay. uh, uh, something. I hadn't met her then. I misremembered. That's interesting. And Mark and I went That's back it. in 2019 to a mm -hmm. New Zealand skeptic to do a conference there. That's when I met her in person. She's a wonderful person. I love mm. that her hair is bright red or pink mm -hmm. or whatever that is. Not only because it just looks great, but it's it, it brings in that youth market, you know, that gets rid of that stuffy, oh, scientists are just these mad scientists kind of look, you know, with a white. But like I look them. like I look uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, that was scary. Yes. So don't ever do that again. But two it's weeks ago, folks, um, because of <laughs> lockdown, you know what? I was I was looking to go to the barber months ago, and then they, and the government said, that's it, we're in lockdown, and all the barbers are shut. And Oh. And so by the time lockdown ended last week, I was looking like something between Beethoven and Einstein. And I put up a TikTok video of me like that, a couple, actually, because I wanted to do TikTok. But since then, yes, I've, you were I'm very scary. back to something normal here's richard normal. weissman oh yes um uh, met him mark edder did a seance for his secret society and uh, i i yeah i had the pleasure of, of speaking in the secret society in edinburgh 16? oh a long time ago but yeah edinburgh secret i was society. i think mark did the last one it was so much fun oh, right. i With was jet lagged seance. out of my skull at the time but i turned up <laughs> and i taught the, the crowd um how to fold uh, some origami and i can't remember which one it was now it was probably uh um a crane or a bird or something like that but yeah that was that was a lot now what he I has a, a book out with copperfield right now and um we've got to get some information i wrote his wikipedia page the wikipedia page on his book um quirkology i think i'm the one that quirkology wrote that. yep i love that book and so i wrote a wikipedia page for it books Rich, don't Richard, do well on wikipedia Richard's such a lovely fellow because he's the sort of guy that I know if I, and I've interviewed him several times over the years, and I know that there's just no need to prepare or swat up or worry or anything. I just turn on the microphone, we have a stroll, and it just flows. Is that and Dr. Carl? 
like Dr. Carl. I know if I'm going to interview Dr. Carl, I just turn on the microphone and say, hey, Carl, and we just go. And it's such a pleasurable experience. Not to say, I, I mean, I like interviewing lots of people, but sometimes I need to really swat up and understand where they're coming from. And I don't know how they're going to be in an interview. Because some people, um, they're a little intimidated because they're, on, they're going to be on a podcast or there's a microphone in their face and they're not quite sure what to say. And that's quite uh, very understandable. I mean, I've been there myself. But with some people like Richard Wiseman or Dr. Carl or Maynard, oh my goodness me, you turn, you turn on the Maynard switch and... Oh, he's one of the best i I always say this one of the best interviewers one of the best in the world especially when you're talking to people who are who believe in strange things magical things he just just relates to them and and it comes out and it's it's good it's really good i mean well well, i'm looking forward to next year to solve a lot of our QAnon problems i would love to see him do uh folks visit maynard.com.au because maynard does a lot of live stuff uh, online, which is great videos and things, because like uh, a lot of people, he's been dealt a, a, a bad hand with the COVID restrictions because his live stuff he he likes to do, DJing and stuff like that, he couldn't do. And even now it's being affected. So, uh, but when we would go to conventions together, Tam or here in Australia, I, I know that after the weekend, I would have hours of interviews with with Maynard because he would interview everybody and just, good yeah. interviews what a, you've what been a, interviewed by Maynard oh yeah I, I was interviewed by Maynard on a bus we were taking in Melbourne that's right and the that's two right. kids were like there was a whole bunch of kids on there looking at me like why is that man holding that giant microphone and interviewing that woman is she somebody we should know no she doesn't look like yes. somebody who should be famous <laughs> why is that man interviewing her and there's all these other men standing around going they're being interviewed and Mark Edward is there with the camera taking pictures and they're yes. like, well, what, what, what? <laughs> that was fun. I remember that. I remember that very well. We all jumped on the, the tram. I think it was a tram. Well, bus, uh, train, same thing to me. Something don't like that. Okay. And uh, you, Maynard's so uh, involved in interviewing you and you're chatting away and everyone, the, the, the public transport, the bus or the tram, whatever it was, was going, what's going on here? That was fun. That was so funny. Look, Richard, I'm going to show you something, and let's let's see if you can catch what we're what I want to talk about really quick. All right. Fun. Does that ring a bell? Well, no. You know it does. It does. And I'm trying very hard to place it. And what the is it? The sun coming through the leaves, making a pattern. Is it? A, is it in that park in Sydney? Oh, no, oh, that God. doesn't ring a bell. Oh, that's the, the Winchester Mystery House. There you go. Winchester yes. Mystery House. You remember You that? and I went there roughly two years back. You took me there and we wandered right through the house and we did a little interview after we were finished. That was um, one of the times I was uh, visiting you, which I love to do in Salinas. And the time one of your cats brought a dead or half dead mouse to my door or something like that. <laughs> in the middle of the night. It was a gift. It was a gift. Yeah, we we had a we had a blast there, didn't we? We we wandered all around the mystery house, had a really interesting tour. It wasn't crowded. Mm -mm. It was pre-COVID, of course. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that day immensely. I did. That's 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 her room. That's where she. That's her bedroom. Yes. Well, one of them. She's got a thousand, I think, or something like that. But it was they. I remember. I like that they have really started downplaying the ghost part of it. You know, it's more mm-hmm. the history of it and how odd it is, but there's less and less ghost parts. If uh, if people watching now live or watching in replay or something like that are interested in that day, if you go to skepticzone.tv, click the episodes link, you'll get to another page where you can do a search. And all you have to put in the search is Winchester, and that will bring you up the episode where Susan and I were at the Winchester Mystery House. And you can listen right off your browser. Yeah, yeah that was great. Really that was so amazing interesting. place. What an adventure. And, and that's in, located in Santa Clara, people, in California. So it is, uh, you know, by San Jose. The stained glass is just incredible. It's mm. Just for the history of it, it's, it's an and, incredible and place. I, Look at all that. Sorts of things. That is all just, sorts of things. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I'm remembering now they would point out parts of the house which were affected by the earthquake. Mm-hmm. And really like interesting that, that, place. Big um, you know, I can't, I can't push it enough. I think it's a, a great idea to get people to go to these places. Not only because, uh, I mean, forget about the ghosty part of it, but there's a lot of really great history on it. 
And, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, you and I, when we do these things, I mean, if if they throw in the hauntings or the ghosties of the stuff, you, it, we, it's okay. You know, we're big people. We can just sit there and smile and everything. But what we're we find far more fascinating, of course, is the reality, the historical um, happenings in the house and the reasons there and and that sort of thing. It's like a ghost tour anywhere, like the ones here in Sydney, which are a mixture of ghost stories and history. So you go for the you go for the history, which is very interesting. And, yeah, well, you know what the thing about it is? Yeah, it's the history, because if we don't go to these places, and we don't, uh, you know, give them traffic and, and, and go and go to the gift shop and buy a few things or whatever like that. These places have to go to the ghost. You know, they have to embrace <laughs> the paranormal. Because it's not be gone to the dogs. It's gone to the ghosts. Yes, They have to embrace it. They have to have people to come in, yeah. and buy tickets and stuff like that. Yeah. And if we want to keep it paranormal free, we have to visit them. I mean, well, you know, that's, I, I agree. I hear what you're saying, but the, but I don't think things like that would ever be paranormal free. I mean, there's always people who enjoy hearing about the ghosty stories, even if it's just for fun. And, it, you know, from a business point of view, old creepy things are going to attract this sort of paranormal hangings on and things like that. I mean, I'd, I'd, it'd be nice if, if it, what would be nice if they could present ghost stories as here's the funny ghost story right. involved right. instead of, you know, we think it could be haunted. No, just say that there used to be ghost stories involved with this, which make up part of the history of somewhere. Right. You know, we right. can't we can't deny that ghost legends and ghost stories and mysterious things are part of the uh, factual history of a place, even if the they're not based on reality. Absolutely, it's really interesting yeah. how this how this works. It's it's a uh, I've been to the Stanley Hotel. Mark and I went to uh, the Stanley Hotel in uh, Colorado. Where was that? Essex, Essex, Essex Park. SD. SD Park. And that's supposedly where The Shining was. And oh. uh, made. Not made. The book was written. And okay. there's <laughs> so much paranormal nonsense in it. I've done two tours one time. One was ghost and one was history. And the history yeah. was so much more interesting than the ghost. It was just so stupid. The ghost thing. Oh. And it's standing in the stairwell and we're looking up and, and there's supposed to be a vortex yeah. or whatever. And it was just like, really... <laughs> Let's talk about the actual history of this place because that's really was fascinating. Yeah. And not well, maybe the, maybe there the, there could be uh, you know two tours one one for the science and history buffs and one for the people who just want to see a ghosty or something. But it was orbs, ghost orbs. Come on, really, we're over that now. Let's let's stop let's stop pandering to those people. Let's tell them some history. There, that was way more interesting. But that's my point. I'm just sending out a message, letting people know that we're still live. Believe it or not, Mark Edwards said there he's going to um, set up his Zoom, and then I can interview him about the work we've been doing with the psychics and the Wikipedia pages. Oh, that's interesting stuff. Uh, that's in now, you and I first met in 2007 on a, cruise. On, on a cruise to Alaska. Mm -hmm and then I was nobody i knew nobody i brought my son the <laughs> only person i knew well I, I i i remember you very well from those days because your son had the pegasus uh stuffed toy right yep you'll probably find a photo oh, we there. won it there we won oh you it. won it yes that's right we were winning I, they had a contest we had to go around and ask people like you know uh like do you have a cat that has no hair or do you, you know, it was like a treasure uh, thing. And I, I loved it. I went and got from Sterling and I went to every person we possibly could and, and asked them and well, we won the pig. Well, you know that you know, there are certain times in your life you think, oh, if I only I could have that again, like a certain magical weekend or a certain time. So that, that trip to Alaska was so much fun because I met some great people and we all, we all had an interesting time. And, um, it was a, a, a bit of a strange time for me because Randy was still recovering from an illness. And so he was there, but he wasn't firing on all cylinders, you know, health wise. And at the last minute, they sort of asked me if I wouldn't mind stepping in and doing a talk and being a table host and stuff like that. And uh, that was just thrilling. That was oh, me. You sure you want me? Who? What? <laughs> I don't remember great. Randy not being well. I don't remember. Oh, well, oh, he was fine, except that he wasn't, he, he, 
I think there was a talk or two that he didn't do because he was just still getting over his, um, was it a heart condition he had lately? Or, you know, because he was in his 80s then and he was having a few health issues every now and then. Uh, but he he was there. Ooh. What? What happened? Oh, I, I, the real world has just encroached on what I'm doing now. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> uh yes i have to say i have to say yes to this request because my sister has just asked me to to help her out okay and and let me show you this picture of you and um my sister who's who's beat covid which i'm very pleased about oh wow there's uh uh phil plate and marcella and myself oh my goodness i remember that camera (laughs) <laughs> my picture the camera i was using must not have been a very good one because the, the pictures and i got I, were not very good especially indoors they were just really awful and then um i have another photo here of the group i, I remember a happy memory on that trip was a group of us all hit, went to the swimming pool on the ship and the, and the seas became a bit rocky and as a result all the water in the pool was going from one side to the other so we'd all catch a ride from one end of the pool to the other and back again <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i was in that one uh, no, you weren't. And I, I remember thinking at the time, I'm oh, was I in my 40s already? I'm thinking at the time, I don't want to grow up. This is great. Woo, splash, woo, splash. Oh, yeah. Now, here's a picture I bet you don't remember. Well, you will now. Uh, Harriet Hall, Dr. Harriet Hall, the wonderful Dr. Harriet Hall. And I think I'm doing a gag on her with a pencil. Doing, I think yeah. you're doing a i thought you were doing bending a spoon ah uh, you know because i can't see what's happening in her hand i could have been bending a spoon or there, there's another funny joke i do with a pencil so it could have been i don't remember harriet yes that's the first time i actually interviewed harriet on that trip and it was she told me it was the first time anybody had interviewed her for a podcast or anything like that well that was the beginning of podcasting really to be honest with you yeah i interviewed her for a show i did before the skeptic zone which was a short-lived thing and we're all looking at that and i don't remember what we're looking at but we're i remember looking at the that... photos that i had taken so far of the ah, group. i had given them because one of the things we were doing is we would take the memory card out of or whatever it was and download it to somebody else's computer yes because we were worried that like a camera would get stolen or something on your way home because we didn't have internet yeah so we would give somebody your whole file and they would trade you, and that way you have somebody else's file just in case. There was I, I think that's a wonderful photograph because if you look at all our faces, we're just we're all delighted. And you know, there's very few times in, in life where you're with a group of people, like-minded people, and new friends, and you can see we're all just we're all just charmed and delighted and and happy. And um, so that yeah, was yeah, that's we were still getting along. Yeah. <laughs> And some some people, uh, sad, uh, very few. Some people did find the um, the motion of the ship hard to deal with. Some people really did suffer seasickness, and I felt so sorry for them. It, it can be very tough. Yeah, very this tough. Is Jeff Wag, everybody. He used to Jeff run Wag, the, yeah. uh, the JRF, um, all the organizations. I haven't seen about. Jeff for many years. He's a terrific bloke. Um, I talk to him man. on Facebook every once in a great while. This is me, yeah, me too. Baker yeah. back here. Here's Richard. Um, there's Phil Plate and his wife. There's Kitty. Yep. Hi, Kitty. Yep. And then there's Hal Bidlack, who Hal Bidlack, was yeah. super important to Tam for for years and years. Yeah. Um, and there was Rebecca, and there was um, some other people I remember who, who maybe I haven't seen for some years now. But again, it was just it was just a happy, interesting, fun time with adventures and and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the thing about cruises is that you don't really have internet. So you really are forced to sit and interact with people without Ah, having, um, you know what we did mm. because, but it was early days. And so the internet was outrageously expensive and it was slow. And I would go to the internet room maybe once every two days and send an email or two. And I remember sitting there once and Randy wandered in with a USB stick and he said, Oh, Richard, here's the latest website update. Can you help me? <laughs> and what do you do when Randy walks in and says, can you help me? You do his voice very well. <laughs> that's, that's really sweet. Here, here's I should here. do like... What? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Here, look. Here's Randy with his big blue eyes. Yeah. And there's Sterling. And there's Pegasus. And he was getting it uh, autographed by people. We still have Pegasus. Yeah. When, Ka- uh, when Sterling oh, was my boy, order- he left me Pegasus. 
there's my autograph on it. Good grief. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. Right next to Randy. Wow. Well, oh, that's hilarious. But yeah, so that was the Pegasus we won. I still have it sitting. He's up, he's up here. You can't see him right now. He's way up uh, on a bookshelf on, on top of everything here. And um, boy, what good memories. Good, great memories. But I must say, Susan, uh, uh, I've really missed um, coming to see you because three times, I think I've been to your place three times, but you I would catch the Bart twice. train. Twice, okay. I'd catch the Bart train down to the end of the line and get Santa a bus say. to San Jose. And then I'd drive up the, pick you up. And I'd be sitting at the train station there just waiting on the co corner of the road. And then suddenly you'd turn up and I'd jump into your car. We'd drive down to Salinas and just have a wonderful time because the last time I was there, I took part in the local skeptic camp, yeah. didn't I? Yes. Monterey County Skeptics. We do a skeptic camp every year. I think, well, this last time when we had to do it virtually, but it's the first Saturday or maybe the second uh, Saturday of every year. I think we've done 10. And we'll, we were just talking last night. Should we try to do one in January live or should we try to do it virtual? We won't know. And it take, it doesn't take me long to plan these things. So well, maybe you we're should have to make that decision should. soon because yeah, you know, it happened with COVID. Well, I mean, if, if at all possible, when you have it and I'm there, you know that I'm, I'm, I will crawl over hot coals to come and talk. At it was, it's so much it fun. So much fun. It's nothing and like getting a group of people together. What did I talk about? I think I just talked about general skeptical. You talked about Australian things. skeptics and, and just the, like, you know, the Ben Spoon Award and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bed of Nails things and just, yeah. just general, like what and we do Australian and skeptics. I had a little table at the back of the room set up with a few little notices and I had my microphone and I was reporting for the show from the back of the room. That's right. Happy times, really happy yeah, memories. selling jewelry and I have my little pig right here. Oh, you've You're got your little pig. Hold it up right to the camera so I can see that one. Is that one of the... Um, um, it's the ones you made. Uh, you, you signed it. And it's yeah. like, it's hard. It's like... It's hard. Yes, yes. It's it's with the resin. It's Pegasus. encased in resin. Yes. Origami Pegasus. Yeah. And look at it every day. So it's right there in front, in front of me. I've got a little one here. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's also encased in resin. It's amazing, you know, that we're, you're in Australia here, I'm in Salinas, California, and we're able to have these kind of conversations with each other. And in the friendships that are made in these communities, are, it doesn't really have anything to do with distance, really, when you think about it. Loc Not I, anymore. Location no. is just a state of mind. Yeah, because, I mean, we see each other every week, if, if for whatever I reasons, see. but always on the prediction project, right? And your trivia yeah. game. So, and, and, and I, when I think of something, someone like Adrian Hill, who I've never met, but I've known now as a good friend for over a year, you know. Um, so it's it's a yeah, it really is a different world. But just going back to Pegasus, of course, and and the the cruise to Alaska, mm -hmm. there was there was no such thing as origami pig Pegasus on the cruise because on the last day, Randy looks at me and says, "You know, Richard, I think you should invent an origami flying pig." And that's he did his voice boom. so well. <laughs> that really and so me. when I, when I flew back to Australia, I spent the next week um inventing it and when when i did the final iteration of the model i looked at it and i thought my goodness look at that that's that is, that's it works it's and well the rest is history yeah <laughs> and and that's how things are done really and that's how, we don't and that's plan them like we don't go let me try to invent a well this gets back to the prediction project because you, I mean, the future is, is so um, different from what you probably could or should expect that the idea that people can sit there and get magical insights to what will happen, it just gets more absurd the more you think about it. We don't know what the tomorrow will, will bring. We really don't. We don't know what will come and go or what events, world events will happen out of the blue. Didn't predict this pandemic. That's right. Well, some people say they did, but then so, any major event, people come out of the woodwork and say, you see, I predicted that. Not like this. This is something I've not never like thought I'd ever see. This is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And the world of anti-science. I had no idea. It's I tell you, I know. I think I was, I was mentioning this to Dr. Carl on the Skeptic Zone podcast that uh, this has really, really brought the anti-vaxxers to prominence. So the rest of society can see what we've been dealing with now for decades. This 
these um, tinfoil hat anti-vaxxers. It's it's really made this apparent. I, I and, would, and, I've and, never and not, thought, no. And not only the, the, the tinfoil hat brigade who just believe in the most bizarre, stupid conspiracies that make us shake our heads, but it's all the people they infect everyday, normal, rational, reasonable people who get sucked into these. Oh, because they saw a video online and this doctor with a PhD after his name has said, oh, uh, this stuff. I said, see, I saw a video. It must be true. You know, it's the lack of critical thinking. It's really, really made it uh, stark, I well, think. Dr. Carl, on the, on your, on the latest Skeptic Zone, which one is, what number is it? The number? That was 680. He talks about how a person will go on to social media and they said, didn't he say 90% of the information they're getting in the first 30 minutes on COVID is, is wrong? I think, I think, yeah, I'd have to listen to some it again. crazy it was number some, like some that. Staggering. It was like, yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, and they said uh, they're getting like flat earth. Oh, he was talking about how the commercials follow you. Yes. On your Facebook page or yes. wherever. Yes. I know that for sure because I made a, a comment on Facebook some weeks ago there was a, a psychic or a channeler or, or chakras or something and i made a, a comment mm -hmm. a very short line and ever since then on my feed what comes up tarot card readers chakras uh psychics <laughs> yeah you put you put that up and it, it'll follow you these ads it was very scary what he was doing i was listening to it as i was at the grocery store so i didn't get the end of it i i, I was at the grocery store listening to well i i um uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it because I, I interviewed Tim Mendham after that. He, 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 mm, I got he you, Tim. Of Tim. He, got, he came here, which was really nice to see him again. And then I do one of the funnier um, Trove segments. I changed yeah, it very late. Those. Yeah, I, I was going to do those. the Psychical Research Society, but then I thought, I'd, I'll make it more fun. And I found this. Did, you heard the, the UFO Trove? I'm trying to remember how far I got into it. Yeah, well, because there's one there's oh, one yeah. report about two Norwegian women who were approached by an alien. I don't know if you heard that one. Remember, maybe I maybe I exited because far before that. There's a brilliant, unbelievable, and I've I've kept the copy uh, typo, and let me show it to you. Yeah, let me show me. you. Let me show. You. Give me a second. I'll just call this up, and it's the funniest. Um, Oh, it's in Dropbox. Give me a second. It's the funny. It's when uh, when I read it, I I thought that can't be. That can't be. That's just too funny. So talk amongst yourselves, folks. I'll just get my. I'll talk to my cat. <laughs> How you doing? Mark's I'll up just here. This up. Hello, Mark. Uh, Hi. Oh, Hi, Mark Edward. And okay, give me one second. I'll just call this up. So I was. Uh, Alleged alien cover-ups, flying saucer. Ah, oh, here it is. Here it is. So let me see if I can do a, a tricky trick like Susan likes to do and share my page. Uh, I hit share. And I think it's this one. So can you see that? Yep. Flying saucer, man friendly. <laughs> All right. Man friendly. And there's a there's a great line in here. And I, as I read it, I can't believe it. Oslo, Tuesday, police in the north and central Norway are setting off today in search of any trace of a flying saucer from which two young women reported seeing a, quote, dork. T-O-R-K, a dork. It does say dork. It says dork. Well, and what, if it, what, if the, what if they meant to say dork? <laughs> a dork. Long head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you get Richard to laugh, you guys. And, and but what you don't know is when I read it for the first time on when I was recording, I I broke up, I cracked up, and I couldn't use it. I had to reread it because I kept st laughing like I am now at the word dork. <laughs> I like the highlight. I like the the title, flying saucer, so just, friendly. So I I sort of figured in the back of my mind it was a young Brian Dunning with long hair because he's quite a dork. Dunning. <laughs> oh, he can't defend himself. He's on the road right now. So there you go. I, there it is. Dork. He's going to see the triangle skeptics, I believe, today. And then tomorrow he's going to do uh, so St. Louis. That, um, no, so not St. Louis tomorrow. Hmm. Soon. If you, if you don't listen to the skeptics, own, why don't you? But there, there's a segment where I, I, I read old um, newspaper reports about the paranormal and the supernatural. And that one, that's brilliant. I love it. A dork alien. <laughs> I still think they might want to, they might want to do it. Oh, you know, they might want to, uh, maybe that's what they meant. 
maybe you're right. I'm, I'm just keeping an, an eye on things here ticking over. I'm just keeping. Well, uh, I'm going to. You've got another guest coming up soon, or you I hope so. You hope I have, so. I have some other things I want to do, so I guess I could let you go, and then you can go and talk to your sister. Yeah, I, uh, things I, I I should attend to in a moment. But Susan, thanks for having me on. Thanks for the interview, and congratulations on what was it? 10, 100, 10, 000, 100 million. 100 million. I can't do that. 100 voice. million. I can't do that voice. I can do Randy, but I can't do um, Dr. Evil. <laughs> 100 million. 100 and million. It's staggering. It's it's ridiculous. And uh, I must put the, the hard word on you because see that? Nothing. I need another. Oh, I wore yeah. my Gorilla Skepticism oh, yeah. shirt let me, put a, let me put a link to our... our um, let me share first and then i will i will put the link i used it. to wear my gorilla skepticism shirt proudly but i wore it so much that you know shirts wear out so there it is we have a few yeah. different uh, mm-hmm. t-shirts you can get it's on t public the about time and mm-hmm. there are the you can order them in, you can order them as t-shirts as pillows you could order them as uh, uh masks there's all kinds of things you can do with them you you just go over to here and uh make your order and we receive a few dollars of it just a couple dollars and what actually i do with the money mm. is i'm going to turn around and use it to give to um when i'm going to go to a conference i'll i'll get a few well m- maybe you should you should join the service you know these where they get celebrities to shout out to people have you seen that it's cameo and other things like that you pay them to yeah you send them five or ten bucks and they'll look at their phone and say Hi, Jim. I understand that you're having a wedding today. Well, you know, this is Richard Saunders. This is Susan Gerbeck. People maybe can throw a couple of dollars your way to have Susan Gerbeck say something personally. Oh, I'm sure that, that the, I'm sure they'd be fighting. <laughs> me. Yeah. They would be, uh, what is it called? Uh, knocking the doors down. They would be. I'm I mean, because, sure you know, be. Susan Gerbeck is such a, such a, such a. Oh, before, unless before I go. Unless we're, um, unless we're uh, Rupert Sheldrake or something. <laughs> before i go can you show the people the little recording set um system i set you up with do you have I that don't handy? Have it handy no oh, it's, you don't it's have it in handy. a drawer over in the other oh, side it's okay. a little hat and then he's a got hat. a little tiny microphone microphone onto yeah. it. and i keep it on there in that spot so i can just take the hat and put it on I haven't recorded much for you lately i mean well just, today you did earlier on it, i'll use that on, on the show but yeah, but in the future, what, what happens is, and I got this idea from Brian Dunning. So he records with a microphone, which sits right there, right, right above his eyes. And it's a very good idea because it means the breath doesn't go up into the microphone. Mm-hmm. And I, I, so I gave that similar idea to Susan. She, she puts on a hat with a little microphone dangling off the peak of the hat. Mm-hmm. And it sounds good. It works well. You're one of the few people who have a certificate from the Skeptic Zone School of Internet of uh, podcasting uh, <laughs> of something. I'm honored. Right? You can't see the certificate. <laughs> it's framed behind me, but you can't see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Susan Gerbeck, I look forward to uh, next year. Next year will be great. I'll come down on the train. You can pick me up and we'll hit, hit the restaurant. We'll hit the, the, we'll, my we'll favorite have a barbecue. restaurant. Now that we've we'll been barbecue. playing today, everybody yep. knows you. And so, then we'll have a, we'll see if we can arrange a local meetup. Mm-hmm. Well, and, uh, if we have a barbecue, it will be a local meetup. That would be very That's cool. how we do things here in Salinas. Ah, I miss, oh, is the train there? Is the train no, going? No, 2024. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it will be soon. That'll be worth waiting for. That'll be great. Folks, I'll say goodbye now. Thank you again, Susan, and congratulations. Thank you, Richard. This is Richard Saunders signing off from Sydney, Australia.